Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. It's the day. It's the night before the fight. We're going to make our final prediction. I totally forgot the Sinisa Estrada fight was on, uh, so I'm going to make this quick to get to that. Um, but, um, you know, check this out. Uh, we're going to get into a, a full preview prediction. I'm going to make it quick. Um, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, please follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Also, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Um, all right, so let's get into uh, let's get into today's show. Spence versus C Crawford preview and prediction. Um, we're, we're finally here. I, I've switched my stance on this like five times, but this is going to be the official prediction. Um, it's it's tough, right? Because I've always compared Terrence Crawford to the Kawhi Leonard of basketball. Like everything he does is is good. Everything. Um, we've seen him get hurt a few times recently, though. Yeah, but Houston had him with a good shot. Um, Kel Brook ha had him with a couple good shots. Um, and I, I think these are reasons. Just you know, neither of these guys fight very often. Um, and Mean Machine had him in a lot of trouble. Um, mean Machine, I think, possibly you know, dropped him. Should be rolled a knockdown. Um, so he's susceptible to being hit. Um, we also know that Spence gets cracked with right hands going all the way back to early in his career at Larte. Uh, Spence also has trouble making weight. You know, this is it for him at 147. It's rumored that the rematch would be at 154, which would be intriguing and stupid. Um, uh, because there is a rematch clause, a two-way rematch clause in the contract. Um, would it be at 154? Hmm, I don't know. Um, ooh, I've heard that. That don't that don't don't quote me on that. That's just a rumor. Um, Crawford is a switch hitter. Spence is susceptible to the right hand. So there's like two options for Spence. He stays in the conventional stance and nails them with the right hand. Lead right hands, lead right hands, and set up something big. You just keep throwing a right hand until something pops, right? I don't think that's a bad idea. I think uh, both guys have an excellent jab. I, I think, obviously, Crawford's is better. Um, so, you know, does he go to the southpaw stance and jab more? Does he jab out of the conventional stance with the southpaw? Does he throw a lead right hand? You know, there's a lot of game plans, a lot of options for Crawford. Crawford can do a lot of things. Like I said, he's basically a perfect fighter. Spence has to come forward. Spence has to cut the ring off. Um, and, uh, you know, Spence can box with him, but I feel like if he boxes with him, he'll be competitive, but ultimately he'll lose rounds. You know, it's not exactly what you want to do. Uh, he can outbox everyone. I don't know if he can outbox this guy. He needs to get on the inside. He needs to beat him up. He needs to slow him down. Crawford is very small, slim. He's wiry, right? I would love to see Spence, who's a terrific body puncher, probably the best in the sport, maybe the best in the sport, get into the inside and really punish his body, really see if he can take his legs away by punishing him, punish him to the body. Um, I, I think that's his key to – the key to victory is wear him down to the body. You know, uh, Crawford's a fine body puncher, right? Uh, but, you know, Crawford, uh, Spence is so thick and so strong, I don't think he's going to slow him down. I, I think that um, the longer this fight goes, the more it favors um, Crawford, right? I think Crawford's the better athlete. He's faster. He has less trouble making weight. I think his endurance will be better. Although, you know, Spence rallied late to beat Porter, right? Um, so I, I'm not saying, you know, Spence has gas tank issues, but he is big for the division. You know, Crawford's getting all these 35, Spence is 33. These guys aren't spring chickens anymore. So, you know, it's just kind of my guess is that the longer it goes, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to favor the, the, the more athletic, uh, slimmer, you know, uh, slimmer, um, guy with less trouble making the weight, right. It makes the weight easier. Um, I, I think Crawford works behind the, the jab, 
I think he has to land a lot of right hands. He can switch to the southpaw stance and nail him with left with right hooks. He can switch to the southpaw stance and nail him with right hooks. I think that that's an option too. Uh, we saw Larte hit him with a right hook from a southpaw stance, right? Um, we saw Porter hit him with a, with a hook with a big hook that rocked him. Um, you know, neither guy has been down that I'm aware of, right? I mean, unofficially, Crawford went down with Mean Machine, but it wasn't ruled a knockdown. Um, so both guys can stand, you know, and, you know, I've heard people knock Crawford's resume. I've knocked his resume, too. What is unreasonable is to say he's fought nobody. His resume is not what you want from a pound for pound elite guy. Spence's is. Spence's doesn't fight enough, right? Crawford... He's got a lot of names in there, you know, most of his names. He hasn't really fought the best guys. Uh, there's no Pacquiao, there's no Thurman, there's no Danny Garcia. You know, there's just, there's not a ton of names on his resume. Although, you know, I'm saying it, 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 it speaks for itself. He's got ones up Gamboa, Ricky Burns, Jeff Horn, right? Like, they're good names. This is not the names you'd want for a pound for pound guy beating those guys. As convincingly as he beats in Victor Postal, it just doesn't make you a pound for pound dude. It really doesn't. Um, but you can see the skills. Like you can see, although his resume is not perfect, right? it's not his resume isn't what you would want. His skills are, you know. And there's no weakness. If I said to you, name the weakness in his game, there, there really is none. And now we see as he's getting into his 30s, he's getting more aggressive. He's going for knockouts. He's won all seven fights by knockout. So traditional logic would tell you Spence is favored. You're know, the bigger guy. Spence is probably the bigger hitter too. Although I think Crawford's power is really real. Uh, Crawford's pro- uh, Spence is probably the bigger hitter. So you, you know, the bigger guy. Bigger puncher, you'd probably favor him to win by knockout. Except the only knockout he has in recent memory is the Ugas fight in his recent fights. You know, going back to Peterson and stuff like that, and Kel Brook, but and and and, and things like that. But you know, I, like Spence, like uh, Crawford said, he hit Mikey Garcia 234 times and didn't hurt his feelings, right? Um, whatever 200, whatever times it was. That's a problem. That's a problem. Um, and, and we know that uh, Crawford can take a good shot. So I, I think you know Crawford's knocked out every guy he's fought at 147. And we see this. Maybe he was draining too much to make 140, although he was knocking guys out at 142 as well. Um, maybe this is his best weight class. Yeah, I remember Mario Barros killing himself to make 130, and then he jumps up all the way to 140 and got nine straight knockouts. You know, lots of competition and stuff, but you know, his power was real, really real. You know, it, it was just that he was draining too much and he was draining his power with the weight cut. You know, is Crawford more powerful at 47 because he makes the weight better? You know, maybe, maybe. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot, um, you know, there's a lot of things Spence can, Crawford can do to win the fight. And I think ultimately that's going to make the difference. You know, I I, I, I see this fight close. I, I, I see it close. I see it close all the way in, right? I, um, I, I think Spence jumps out to an early lead. I think, he, you know, he gets inside. Uh, he jabs well, and he does enough, and he wins some early rounds. But I think, you know, we get to the fourth fifth round, Crawford's going to start taking over. And by late round, Crawford's going to pick it up. Um, he's going to be the fresher guy. He's the faster guy. Um, he's going to have legs left, and he's going to catch, you know, kind of a slow, flat-footed um, Crawford. Or a slow, flat-footed Spence with hooks and, and all types of stuff. And I think by the end of the fight, it's close, but it's clear that the, the dominance in the second half of the fight gives Crawford the win. So I, I, I'm taking Crawford by uh, a competitive but clear decision. Like, it, it's 115, 113, 116, 112 on the cards, and it's close, but clearly Crawford won more rounds, right? And that's kind of my prediction. So close, but, uh, you know – competitive decision. I'm going to take Crawford. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. It's uh, July 28th, 2023. I'm picking against the Texan. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button.